Hello and welcome to Mastering the Box. In this week's video we're going to take a look at Studio One 5 and the project page. We're going to take a look at some of the plugin updates and we're also going to take a look at the limiter and how we can use it to make our songs louder. Hello and welcome to Master in the Box. I am your host Smudge and in this week's video we're going to take a look at PreSonus Studio 1.5. Um, the new update has been released this week and we're going to take a look at the uh, some of the plugins that come free with Studio 1.5 and why I use them in mastering. And I'm also going to take you through an overview on a simple way and how to use a limiter and to get your song sounding louder. So for those who've been following my channel for some time now will know that I love Studio One and this week has seen the release of Studio One Professional 5. It's fantastic. The project page largely remains unchanged but the plugins, there are a few updates that uh, just set these plugins just a little bit above some of the other stock plugins you might find in other platforms. So I'm going to go through some of the uses in uh, this particular mastering session today. One thing I think people kind of get a little bit confused with when it comes to mastering is there's a belief you must have certain plugins or certain mastering plugins to get the best mastering job done. Well, this isn't always the case. Now, I will put my hands up and say I have a lot of specific mastering plugins that I use on a daily basis, but it does not mean you can't get fantastic sounding masters by using stock plugins. Stock plugins can be fantastic. I'm going to show you through some of the ones that come with Studio 1.5. So before we dive into the mastering session, the song featured this week is a song by the band North to Alaska called All The Same. This song is available for download on the Cambridge Music Technology site run by Mike Senior. This is a fantastic resource, so if you're looking at getting into mastering, or if you want to hone your craft, get a little bit better and use some test songs to master, then check out the Cambridge Music Technology site by Mike Senior. It is a fantastic resource and I will highly recommend it. So one of the things I often get asked is, where do you start with mastering? And if you're new to mastering, I think it's fair to say it can be a little bit overwhelming. But one good rule of thumb, which I would always recommend for people to start with, is getting the song to a rough ballpark loudness. Now, we know that there's loudness normalisation. We know that digital streaming platforms all have slightly different and slightly varying recommendations that they use. So the first thing I would recommend is get the volume into a ballpark figure for what you want as your loudness levels for your digital releases. For those who've been following the Master and Loudness Simplify series will know that one of the, my top tips is to listen to the song the whole way through, check to see how much headroom we've got to play with and then see what our overall loudness is according to our loudness meter so that we can see how much loudness or how much extra we need to push the song. Um, so what I want to do is just to speed things up a bit, I'm going to play the song all the way through, speed the video up and then we'll come back and look at the level meter. Okay, so there we have it. That's the song played through. Um, we're using the pre-sonus level meter, which actually is set into R128 mode. So for those who's followed the Master and Loudness Simplified series, we know that the R128 is the EBU standard for loudness in Europe. Um, I'm using the measure in LUFS. And one of the things we just want to take a look at here, what you'll see is the INT, or the integrated reading, is minus 23.9 LUFS, with a true peak level of minus minus 8.22 dB. So for anyone using Spotify as a benchmark, Spotify will normalize levels at minus 14 LUFS with a true peak. They want their true peak set in no more than minus one dB. So we've got plenty of room to play with here. So this is where I would always start if you're just starting out and let's get some loudness. And this is the stock limiter that comes with Studio 1.5. And it's had a bit of an overhaul, certainly had a, a GUI update. But this is a great simple to use limiter. And there's some fantastic features here. So we have the True Peak setting. The particular setting I'm using here is the K12 rating. And I will show you why as we go through. This is in bypass mode. We know we've got plenty of wiggle room. The ceiling I've set at minus 1.5 dB and I've left the attack in normal setting and the release in stock so I'm just going to play with the gain we'll check the level meter and we'll get the uh, song into some kind of ballpark loudness OK, 
Okay, so another good top tip here is just have a look at the short term and the momentary LUFS. So this is going to be shown in here. Now in this particular example, I've boosted the gain on the limiter by 4.95 dBs, which is going to, it's, it's pushing the loudness up to where we want it. I've not played the song all the way through, so you'll see that the integrated level is still minus 19.2. However, if you look at the short term and the momentary, when I play this in a second, it'll be just under minus 14. So what that's going to give us is going to give us good indication that the total integrated will be in that rough ballpark figure and that's going to be a nice good place for us to start with the rest of the processing. And you'll also notice that the true peak is coming at minus 1.6 dB. Another thing to be cautious about when using the limiter, just understand that a limiter is also a compressor. So you'll see here that there's actually some reduction here of minus 0.77 dB. I don't tend to do too much compression with the limiter. If I were going to look at compressing, I would use some form of mastering compressor on the actual insert itself, but we'll come on to that in a second. Okay, so now we've got the ballpark volume in place. As I said, I don't tend to use the limiter for a lot of compression. What I prefer to do is use another compressor at some point down the chain. And in this particular instance, I've decided to go with the compressor first of all on the insert chain. So if you see here, this is the actual insert chain for the individual track. This is the actual inserts for the overall master. So if we were mastering more than one song, anything that was applied here would be applied to every single song. And then we've got here the post level, which I use for the metering. So in this particular instance, I wanted to get a little bit of compression to start with. And the reason why I'm using a different compressor, or I'm actually not using the limiter, because I just wanted to get a little bit different characteristic in there. So what I've chosen in this particular instance is the Fat Channel XT plugin. Now this is one of the plugins that comes with the PreSonus Sphere. So if you get the Sphere bundle, then you will get this as part of the Fat Channel XT. And all I'm really looking to do is just to get about a dB's worth of compression. The ratios on the minimal. In mastering, we generally use small ratios rather than a lot of typical mixing engineers. We use somewhere around four, five, six to one. In mastering, it's not uncommon to use 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 to one. In this case, we're just using the lowest, which is two to one. So let's play a bit of the song at one of the loudest parts, and we'll just see what the compressor is doing. Okay, one of the big things I was really wanting to go for here is just a, it almost felt as if there were a lot of different elements, but they weren't cohesive enough. So I just wanted to add a little bit of overall glue. And what this is doing is it's just going to apply some compression to every single signal in the, in the whole song itself. So when we're mastering, we are looking at processing all the instruments together. We're not looking at processing different elements. We're trying to get a nice cohesive balance. And just by doing adding this little bit of compression, it just adds a little bit of glue to our overall sound. The kick drum in this particular song it almost it was just sticking out on its own and just one other thing i really wanted to do is kind of just glue it back into the rest of the track and just adding that one db of compression here it just kind of brought it all back in and just made it a little bit more cohesive so that is this is a great little tip just to get the compression in control first get it one of the first things you you put on your insert chain and just get the overall sound just sound a little bit more cohesive and it will make the rest of the, the processing easier for you. So one of the next plugins I was really interested in trying was the Tricomp. Now this is, I suppose the easiest way to explain it is kind of like a multiband compressor type scenario, but one of the things they've added to a lot of their plugins is the state space technology. Now this is an, in essence, it's a, it's a drive. So in a lot of the different plugins, it will apply in different ways, but in this Tricomp, it actually gives you a saturation, which is fantastic. So what we're actually doing in this plugin we're not doing anything to the input the mix is 100% we are on level gain but a saturation at 5% we've got a little bit of compression going on here and as you can see it's actually just affecting the low and the high so you see here the low I've set to full the high at 1.8 the high frequency of 3.2k and the low frequency of 203 hertz I'm just going to play it in bypass first and then we'll kick it in and you can just see the subtle difference that this is making
So one of the things this is doing is just uh, it's adding some lovely warmth. There is a little bit of compression going on, as you see. It's just a tiny amount of reduction. But I just want to show you this saturation knob. If I turn this up a little bit further, it can get crazy. So you have to use an element of caution. But just use, just take a listen at this, and uh, we'll see how far we can push this saturation. <laughs> So even up to around 28% there, it started to get really crispy on the top end, which is not the kind of sound I was going for on this particular track. But just adding that tiny little bit of saturation just adds that something something to the track. Okay, so we've applied some compression. I don't want to overdo the compression. So what I actually wanted to do next is just to do a little bit of tidy work on the EQ side. So in this particular instance, we're using the Pro EQ 2, which also has had a bit of a facelift, and this is fantastic. So what have I plumped for in this? One of the things I noticed whilst I said earlier on about the kick drum, the kick was kind of almost... It was almost standing out too much. And one of the things I also noticed was the bass. The bass was kind of somewhat sunk in the mix. So what I wanted to do is just use a little bit of EQ just to give the bass a little bit of a boost. But also, when we're boosting low end and when we're looking at the particular, in this instance, we're boosting 126 hertz. With the roll off and the Q I've applied here, it's got quite a good a good cue but also adding in a little bit of that mud area around the 300 hertz area so what i've also done is done a little dip just to literally almost 0.96 of a db it's not even a whole db just to take out some of that mud and one of the things i the other thing as well i was trying to emphasize the top end now one of the, the the classic ways of doing this is to put some kind of shelf on the top end i mean a lot of people say try and look for something around about the 10 to 11k and just put a db or two shelf on the top end but i didn't really want to do that because it starts to affect a lot of the symbols in the track and if you've got something that can potentially be a little bit fizzy on the top end it's just going to emphasize that a little bit further so i just wanted to get a good vocal range in this particular instance i've chosen the high mid frequency level of 3.2k just shy of and it's we're just boosting it by about 0.72 dB with a really wide Q. So what I want to do again is just play this. Uh, we'll play it in bypass and then we'll, we'll kick it in. And then you can see what changes this is going to make to the overall track. So as you can see, it's just adding just that little bit more, just in case anyone looks at the screen and thinks, cool, those are that's some big EQ moves. This is why I love the Pro EQ too. The level range is actually set to 6 dBs. So even this here looks like a big EQ move. It's actually it's still less than 2 dB. And in mastering, we're only looking tiny amounts of adjustments. We're just trying to enhance the mix, not replace the mix. So we, we would generally look to do things very subtly and in this case it's, it's perfect because we can use the level range at 6 db get in there making minute adjustments but we can have a good visual reference as well so that's exactly what i've done with the pro eq there last but not least multiband dynamics i'm not a massive fan of multiband dynamics in mastering because i think it's often overused it's often used poorly and a lot of people use it to boost the low end and it's not my favourite use of it, if I'm being perfectly honest. Now, one thing I do like to use the multiband dynamics for is to, uh, is to tame the top end. Now, this was a great, actually, mixing tip, which I've kind of brought into the mastering domain, was to use, rather than using a de if you've got a lot of sibilance at high end, so we're talking sibilance on the vocal, but also a lot of, if you hear that tis sound on the hi-hats, use a multiband dynamic and just tame the, the high end. Just to take a little listen to this and just show you exactly what we're doing here with this. Up, 
I think this is the thing I love about this plugin. It can be overkill, but it can also be so subtle. And one of the things is just applying a little bit of it's almost volume reduction. I set it to 5.09 kilohertz, and it's rather than compressing the top end, it's just turning the volume down a little bit, just to make the harshness just going away without adding an extra compression. It's a fantastic little tool to use without adding too much compression along the way. So just before we finish up, let's take another look at the level meter. As you can see, the integrated LUFS is a much more uh, responsible level at minus 14.7 LUFS. We've still got the short term and momentary around about the minus 10 mark. So what this is actually saying is at the loudest points, it's about minus 10 LUFS, but the integrated level is minus 14.7. The true peak here is coming at minus 0 0.54, which is still a little bit too hot. So let's see if we can just do a little bit here just to uh, just to tame that a little bit. Oh, so let's take a listen to the end. That's perfect. What this is telling me is the short term and momentary loudness are hovering around the minus 10 LUFS mark at their loudness. The true peak level is minus 1.28 dB, which is great. The integrated in this particular scenario is going to show us at 11.1 LUFS, but that will not be the true integrated level. If I was to play the song all the way through again, it would come round around about the minus 14 LUFS mark. <laughs> Okay, so there we have it. The integrated LUFS for this particular song, I've masked it to minus 12.8 LUFS, which is a good responsible level. True peak settings coming in at minus 1.4 dB. So these short term and the momentary loudness levels are around about minus 10 LUFS. So this is a good uh, master song for the digital distribution platforms. Just one thing before we go, just want to give you a quick comparison, the before and after, so we'll bypass all the effects and then we'll just do a quick listen to what it sounds like before and what it sounds like after. Okay, so that's how you can master a song in Presona Studio One Five. This is, I think, it's such a great tool for us mastering engineers. It's not perfect by any means. There are a few additions which I hope will be coming soon, but this is a great platform. Um, I love the the integration. If you are a, a home a singer songwriter or you've got your own band and you're doing the recording, you're mixing and you're mastering, this is such a great tool and it's highly recommended. So I hope you got some uh, some good tips out of this video. If there's a particular part of mastering that you're not quite sure what it means or you're not quite sure how to do certain things with mastering, let me know in the comments below because I'll be really keen to understand what your struggles are and I can look to do some, some particular tutorials that will help you in the near future. As always, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, hitting the subscribe button below and don't forget to click the little bell which will give you updates on all of our future videos moving forward. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and all that's left for me to say is I hope you all keep safe and well.